This month we're going to concentrate on the flying geese border. There are 14 segments per side times four borders, which means we need a total of 56. This template that I have provided for you for your foundation pieces indicates that you are to print 10 sheets to get enough foundation pieces. Just as I did for the Mariner's Compass Center, I have provided you with cutting templates in order to make it a little bit easier for you to make your flying geese. Here I am showing four different fabrics cut into strips three and a quarter inches wide. One strip of fabric cut three and a quarter by the width of your fabric will give you all the fabric you need to cut all your templates by just simply alternating the top and bottom as you go across the width. The second template is for sections two and three. This requires 112 pieces cut. These pieces will be cut out of your background fabric and should be cut using strips three inches wide and you will need six strips. You should get approximately 20 of these pieces out of each width of fabric. Again, you're going to alternate top and bottom on your template as you work across the width of the strip. The first step is to take segment one and two, but on the wrong side of our foundation piece and stitch. Then step two, we're going to add segment three to the other side. And we're going to stitch that side down. And just that quickly, we have one flying geese segment completed. And we only need to do 55 more. But that didn't take long at all, did it? You're going to love this part. There's no matching whatsoever when we sew these things together. The only thing that you want to make sure is that you're hitting the corner <clears throat> triangle as you're stitching the two blocks together. Other than that, as long as you have the ends matched up, you're good as gold. Now look how nice that point lines up with our seam line. Perfect. Gotta love it. Now we'll just keep adding more segments until we get a row of 14. You want to check your color chart though to make sure that you're getting them in the right color sequence as you're stitching. Um, they need to alternate all the way around and that will be in your workbook so that you can see how they'll go together. But as you can see, it takes no time to put these together at all because we have no matching to worry about whatsoever. And in just a few short minutes, we have all 14 of our flying geese stitched together. Now I know it sounded daunting when you saw how many pieces you had to cut to make this border, but now you can see it goes together it just about as quick as it takes to cut out the pieces. It is for that very reason and the fact that I know you're all experienced now that I'm adding the next block into this month's lesson. It's another small one, so hang on, but I know you can do it. Meet Minnie Mary. So we're going to open up the foundation factory like we always do. We're going to find the Mary's block. And double click on that. We need four of these blocks, a total of four inches, and since it takes four blocks for each star, we have to make each one two inches. We need four blocks times four segments, so a total of 16. 
it's telling us here we need two pages to print the patterns. We want to go up here and double check where your paper is located. In my case, it's in a rear tray. Make sure it's showing 8.5 by 11 paper if that's what you're using. Click OK. And then you go ahead and click on print. Now, Mini Mary is not a new block. This is the same block that we did in block number three. This is the Mary block, but in a smaller size. In order to complete our flying yeast frame, we will need four of these for the cornerstones. If you need help constructing it, refer back to lesson three. These blocks took me one day's session. The flying geese blocks took me an additional one day session. So in two days, I have the entire frame completed. Now we're going to stitch a mini Mary at each end of a flying geese strip. And we're going to do that twice so that we have something that looks like this. After the paper has been removed from your flying geese strips, sew two of the plain strips to each side of the center medallion using a quarter inch seam allowance. It's now time to add the last set of strips to your medallion and your center will be complete. We will be quilting this entire center section in our next lesson. I don't know about you, but I'm getting pretty excited now. We can really see this quilt coming along. So until next time, I can't wait to see your progress. See you next month.